after that. <laughs> oh, and there he is. People, our most favorite of all non-Russian Russian people. It is Cyrus. Welcome. Hello, Hello everyone. Sorry for the delay. I was trying to get, get signed in here, but oh no problem. Good to see I'm, you. Snarky I'm chat doing... team. What's up? Yeah, these are all my the people who are secretly behind the scenes being so much funnier than anyone can possibly imagine. And so that everybody can see you very well, I am going to pin you. Cool. There you are. I'm going to pin us too, so you're not quite so yep. alarmingly where you are. <laughs> alarmingly. <laughs> Welcome. Um, uh, yeah, so we were just talking before you popped in, Cyrus, about the Cyrus confusion, because when I first uh, announced that you were going to come on and be our special guest, um, I said, oh, Cyrus is coming. And of course, there's the character of Cyrus Renault on the show. So everybody got and, excited. Yeah, everybody was like, well, everybody got excited. And then it went, oh, no, 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 not that Cyrus, Yuri. And then everybody, and then everybody really got excited. Oh, sure. Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> yeah, I was like, they're like, all right, we'll deal with it. We'll, we'll take it. But yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, that's funny. It was actually, there was confusion on set too. They're like, Cyrus, and people would kind of give me a look like, Cyrus? I was like, that's my my name, not, you know. And it was, but yeah. Do they usually fun. um? Do they usually call you by character name or actor name? Because I know a lot of subsets just do characters. Uh, they usually by name. I think people are pretty pretty formal there. But uh, the first day, or I think the first two days I showed up on set, I actually only spoke in a Russian accent, um, mainly because I wasn't comfortable with it. So I wanted to. <laughs> see if it was worked and then you know at first it did i guess people seem to say it's fine now but so i think people actually thought my name was like yuri something something but uh well cyrus too cyrus sounds kind of crazy so it all fit with the with the um anyways but uh yeah well we are we're so excited that you have taken the time on this president's day weekend and you may not know this but next week David and I both have our birthdays, so you are our birthday present to ourselves. <laughs> I'm I'm flattered and honored to be here, so that's awesome. I'm glad that I could be of service in that yeah. in that regard. We're we're big believers of treat yourself. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> happy freaking birthday, guys! That's awesome. Thank you. That's cool. Thank, you. <laughs> Thank you. So, so um, carry on, my friend. Yeah. So you are from originally from Scottsdale, Arizona, correct? Yes, sir. And I was just telling everybody in the room, because uh, I watched uh, this other podcast you did, not to pick on other people, but there seemed to be some confusion about which USC you were at. And we all know it was <laughs> Southern California. <laughs> oh, people thought South Carolina, maybe? Right, because of that podcast, yeah. But yeah, um, yeah so uh, from football to acting, tell yeah. us a little bit about um, your football career first. I know you did super well in high school, won a lot of awards. And then how did you end up at USC? Um, that's funny. Uh, yeah, I used to be, once upon a time, I used to be a really good football player. Um, and uh, I I guess how, long story short, I had a lot of offers to go to most places in the country. Um, and I was leaning pretty heavily towards ASU, which is where a lot of my friends, family are. And like, you know, you want to, a lot of people were encouraging me to do that, but I, I had this like small thing in the back of my mind, my mind about USC and UCLA, uh, to be fair, because um, I like acting. I like theater. I knew I liked it in high school. I liked I performed uh, my first performance ever besides elementary stuff was a seventh grade talent show where I sang Ring of Fire by Johnny Cash. Um, oh, it turns out middle school kids that video yeah middle school <laughs> kids don't really give a damn about Johnny Cash so it wasn't a very exciting I didn't win but um but I thought it was all right anyways I always like enjoyed performing uh class clown but respectful um I was always the mascot I was always the um, people at the at the pep rallies and stuff so I enjoyed like performance on a on a very whatever base level and then so the night before you know, I was like pretty, you know, set on going to uh, ASU, but my brother actually, um, bless his heart, was like, yeah, you should, you should probably go to USC. For He just kind of knew like what I wanted in my heart. And he was like, you should probably go to USC because they got, to, you know, it just doesn't compare to ASU as far as the, the network that USC has. And again, for theater and acting, why would you not want to be? The you know, there's not much of a scene, an art scene out here in Arizona. It's kind of growing and it's new, but. 
I mean, LA is the Mecca. So, and uh, I had this vessel of football, which I, oh yeah, by the way, their football program is pretty storied and pretty good. <laughs> yeah. Um, just a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> that's actually why I chose USC over at UCLA. Cause I just felt like they cared. Like U UCLA was selling me on the acting stuff and theater, but like they, they only did that. And I was like, yeah, but I'm coming here to play football. So, you know, I need to, Maybe I'm a Bruin. I'm a Bruin. So oh don't. no, I'm so sorry to hear that. <laughs> oh man, that's you know it's yeah. okay. But yeah. I'm just joking. They're I'll a great. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they're a great program. I mean, they're not even like like we're so, we have so many friends. It's like not even like a real rivalry, really, because there's so much cross section. Um, now, if you said Notre Dame, I'd be a little more mad at oh, you. Oh yeah, um, no, no, no. But or no. Oregon. <laughs> um, those are rivals, baby, and they're fun. But uh, anyways, um, yeah, so I ended up going to USC because I knew in my heart of hearts I wanted to do acting. I just didn't know it quite, quite yet how visceral it would be. And USC actually like gave me that spark where, you know, I remember one at my first acting class. I did this finally I did this scene like the way I wanted to do it. And I was like, I think I kind of like this more than football. <laughs> and that's a, It's not a good feeling i was like oh crap because you're here for football <laughs> and it's your identity and it's your i don't know how to explain it. i just it was like a it was like an anxious feeling i was like oh crap i think i kind of like this thing more um now did you anyway. did you come from a did you come from like a big football family i mean was there any like like uh objection or concern that you were also interested in theater because that usually is the case and right uh, I didn't come from a big like we. I got good athletes in my family, big family. I mean, my brother's six four two fifty. My cousins are all six three and up. So imagine all these boys just beating the crap out of each other. And uh, yeah, breeding breeding athletes. So we had athletes, the boys, but I didn't have any like guidance in the family as far as like, especially at that level, going to uh, Division One football. It's just a, it's a crazy. It's a different world. It's just its own and recruiting like the recruiting process. Um, in high school, it's such a, and I bet it's even crazier now. I don't know if you guys are familiar with the change of NILs in college football, but you're now essentially a professional athlete. So translate to high school. Now it's everything. It's all changing. It's really, it's cool. And good, it's good in some ways, but crazy in others. Um, so I think I got away from your question. Uh, oh, um, <laughs> all right. okay. I, we're very stream of consciousness. Yeah. I was going to say the, the point I want to make too was I actually have been spoiled with support. Like everybody's really been supportive of my acting and theater thing. And I think it's because they know that I'm serious. Like I've, I do a lot of, you know, people see me how I am at, in crowds and how I mess with people and performing and making people laugh and impersonations and things. So like, nobody's really like, you want to do acting? They're like, all right, shit, <laughs> you know? So. <laughs> so it wasn't like a big surprise. Like if you were in a play and like, did your football buddies come like to the plays and that that you were in? Yeah. Anybody? Yeah. Yeah. That was cool. And um, I really, they were all so interested, you know, like it's such a different world theater. And then especially, you know, going to SC where it's like really good people are there for theater I'm there for football. We kind of don't like each other. Like they think I we get everything for free, you know, like uh because we're on scholarship. And I'm like, you know, and I don't like them because I'm like, listen, I'm up before you, I go to bed after you, and I'm still here doing like you know, so it's like we had a we had a um tiff, but it was cool, like you know, theater, if you're doing it right, it's gonna be vulnerable, it's gonna be art. So we just it we blended really well. And, uh, you know, I tell my football guys, man, I'm like, hey, man, there's this this isn't just like good. I mean, I love acting, but there's like some therapeutic stuff in here. And um, and by the way, the really pretty girls and uh, not a lot of competition with the guys. No offense, theater guys, but, uh, you know, you get it. You get no, a, but that's, you get that's a, the usual way that people go into theater. Like, you know, they're they they meet somebody and they're attracted to them. And like, oh, they're, they're acting yeah, class. Yeah, right. I'll, yeah. <laughs> I'll, I think I'll join. Yeah. Right, right, right. No, I didn't. I wasn't doing it for that reason. But I, I was trying to convince my football guys. I'm like, come to the parties, man. There's, you know, but they, all, you know, <laughs> they're, they're perks. again, again, two very different worlds. Which I'm very grateful that I had that experience because I think that was profound for me to be in those um, two different spaces. You know, like that at a high level. And and as we've we've said before in some of our chats, you know, because a lot of a lot of actors were, you know, sports people. Um, prior to going into acting and it, it, there really is a lot of similarity and some of the same discipline between sports and acting so I mean you know probably a very easy transition for you and like you said and then you Absolutely. get to be vulnerable and do do your own kind of therapy <laughs> Absolutely and actually the teachers kind of liked me because they were you know they were able to 
they're able to yell at me, you know, like a lot of kids and beautifully. So like, are really sensitive, really. Sen so like when they get criticism or attacked or whatever, it's like, oh. and I'm, you know, I'm used to coach Ed Odron, who if you guys know who coach O is won a national championship with the Tigers, I'm waking up to this guy at five in the morning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Blah, blah, blah. You better get your ass going. And uh, a theater teacher, like, like yelling at me, I'm like, please. So, but I needed, I needed that kind of coaching and, and they knew that I was willing to go, to you know places so like i had like teachers that were we we bonded well um and uh that was one of the things they pointed out about acting and football like it really i really draw a relation to it because it's like you do so much prep you do so much practice like grinding hitting the pads every day waking up taking care of your body da, 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 all these things and just loading your brain and your body and then landing those together and then the game day comes and you freaking throw it all out and you just play, baby. You don't think you're not like, oh, I need to put my foot here at this time when the play. You're just playing. But, it's like, but isn't like that dancing. the same when you're in on the stage and you're in live yes. theater? You are in the zone. You're not thinking about, oh, I'm supposed to put my right foot over here when I'm saying this line. You're just doing <clears throat> it. Be you know, and, being it. That's the better way of saying it. Yeah. Yes. I mean, you don't. You're not like up there, like, oh, I need to be sad now. I need to be happy now. You're yeah. just like, <laughs> yeah. you're dancing, you know, back and forth. And I had a great moment when we we're everybody was doing their scenes. Uh, it was kind of it was kind of struggling, and I did a scene with a girl, and um, she spilled the water on accident, and we kept doing the scene. But I got up to find something while we were doing the scene, and like just wiped the water. And my teacher was like. He's like, that's what the thought of. He just got excited, but he brought up the athlete stuff. He's like, you do your prep, but you respond to the moment, what's happening in the moments. And you don't know what you're dancing. You don't know what people are doing their prep too. You're you're on a team. You're not, you can't just walk in there like that. So it's like team sports, man. I mean, just directly translate to, to entertainment, theater, and acting. Cause you just, you're a part of this huge organism and you have a job and you have to rely on those people and, um as pressure you know there's 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 and then yeah you i mean when the camera's rolling when they call i equate i actually wrote in my shorts the story i've been working on but it's like the when the whistle blows and when the action calls it's like it's like the same thing it's like everybody's equal for this 10 seconds or whatever it is you know and i just i that's what i love about performance and stuff in general and sports obviously it's like that's like the truest form of truth <laughs> you know it's like for me, at and, least, not for everyone. And and going back to what you uh, just said a uh, couple minutes ago, if you are sitting there or standing there, whatever, when you're acting, saying, "Okay, left foot there, say this, move here on this line," you're probably not a very good actor. <laughs> you have to be. I, I have an acting background myself. You have to be in the moment and like what you did in in class, respond to real time things happening, going wrong. I did uh, improv for years. And that's, nice. you, know, you know, and that's always great. I always recommend taking improv classes because that's what it is. You're responding in the moment. You're not sitting there just, okay, I'm waiting to say my next line. You're actually well, listening to that person saying their line and responding as your character, which is great. So when did the switch come? When, when did like, <laughs> okay, this, you know, when we're, we're coming down this row, we're, we're playing this, we're playing, we're in the safe zone because we've got, football here we've got theater at this school when did you make that sort of decision to okay it's going to be the arts the arts there was the a arts. couple the arts that's how you have to say it now um i uh there's a couple moments one was when i was telling you about where i was like oh what is this thing because i never had anything like that before football you know football like was my religion um kind of <laughs> in a sense so when i found this thing of like theater and uh and acting i was like in the early like freshman year like first acting class so that was the feed and then football kind of wasn't you know once you lose passion for a thing really and then like there's just injuries and like thing, you know i was playing out of position so I, I was in high school just uh i was a really good tackle offensive tackle and then at USC, they wanted me to play center, and it's just uh, for the you know people who aren't football fans, it's just like a very different position for me. Like it's like very it's very heady, and uh, things weren't going well for me in football. And again, I was like didn't really care, you know, like I did in high school, right? You know, I'd fix it if it was a problem. But now I was like, I don't know, I'm kind of having fun at school. <laughs> like I have this other thing that I'm kind of putting a lot of love and attention to. And then years go by, and I was kind of I went back to play football while I was still going to school at USC, and I was kind of 
you know, and they'll, I don't know if you people who here have gone to school like that, getting ready for post college life. Like, what am I going to do? Where am I going to be? All my buddies do coaching. You know, I knew I wanted to do acting, and by that time, I had done acting and commercials and theaters, and I had my degree, so it's like I was doing it. But you know, just like naturally, I was like, oh, maybe I'll do coaching on the side. Like, well, I go. But I remember my coach, Coach Clay Helton from USC who caught a lot of crap about being a terrible coach, but he's a good human. So I don't, you know, he cares about, he cares about guys, you know, which you don't find in, in um, coaches sometimes, you know, he cares about you being a good man, not just a good football player. So shout out to coach Clay Helton because he caught a lot of flack for, you know, unnecessarily. And, um, but he was like, tell you what horse, I can get you a job as a coach, but uh, if you want to do acting, that's way more competitive than football. You better start getting to do acting. And uh, I dramatized his, his voice a little bit, but he really made it. He made it clear to me, like, this is not just something you can passively do. You don't just like, yeah, maybe I'll do acting a little bit. It's like, no, man. He's like, not everybody can play football, right? Like, you have to kind of be, it's like in basketball, right? Like, you can, I'm, se- I'm not seven foot, but like acting, essentially, everybody can technically do it, right? So it's like, he's like, man, that field. And I laughed at him when he said it. I was like, more competitive than football. Listen to this guy. Uh, and after about a year, I was like, <laughs> I was just like, oh, this ain't football, ain't nothing. So, <laughs> so yeah, two two big moments. So really, um, oh, okay. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm going all these questions. I'm just going all over the place, but to you're sharpen fine. it up, you're just fine. <laughs> <laughs> to uh, to sharpen it up is um, just graduating um, graduating college. I put that last year football too. You know, I, I went back to play because I I felt like it kind of it kind of chewed me up and tossed me out. So like, I stopped playing and got into acting, and then I went back to play because I wanted to like end it on my terms. I don't know if that makes sense. And maybe th- maybe think about the NFL. You know, maybe think about it. But I had a headache every day. Every day I had a headache, and I was like, dude, like I'm one of my twenties. You know, like I got a headache. I'm not trying to go go to the next level where I'm going against larger bigger faster stronger angrier men i'm like yeah i think you're gonna i think we're gonna dive into this acting thing buddy <laughs> yeah yeah and too many i can pretend from that. Yeah. i can pretend to play football and still get you know that's that's the great of it there you go and you don't get too many tbis from acting no no yeah. your head it you, your head's a little safer um than banging it against a grown man against his will every play you know, so. <laughs> i can't even imagine to put it in a certain way yeah so when did so what was like um so what so after college like what did you do did you get an agent first or did you just start auditioning or what and what was your first role first role I got really excited because some buddies called me um to do a I was a werewolf played a werewolf and I was stoked because it's like I had a teacher too to tell me like big guys you know big guys are usually creatures and stunts that's what a lot of big guys do for at least in entertainment it seems like that's their <laughs> bread and butter but to do a werewolf i was like hell yeah i mean i grew my hair out my beard was here and i had bad unibrow <laughs> i went full like i'm doing this it was a corny it didn't i don't even think anything amounted of it but it was fun so that was my very first role um and then i looked up what was that in? It wasn't even, it was like, I think it was some, some USC kids, uh, not USC kids. They were great guys, but they, um, they graduated too. They made a short film that they were going to sell as a pilot and all that stuff. And I don't think it ever went anywhere. Um, a commercial. Oh, I did an NCAA commercial. That was like my first time, like really being in a high level set. Um, that was funny. I was a linebacker on, in the, uh, in the, in the scene. Um, so some commercials just like, uh, football was actually very helpful for my acting because it was a way in. Um, it was a yeah. something I knew I was an expert at technically and uh, could do the stunts, obviously. So Ballers was another one I got on as a background. So I worked a year or two on Ballers. I think I worked a year on Ballers as background. And then, you know, I got my, that was like my first big, big um, thing that I got to work on was the Ballers episode. Um, but I was, you know, I had no idea what the hell I was doing. I mean, I was in my car for many of the weeks. Um, uh, shout out to uh, very good friends in L.A. And if you guys like breakfast food, please go by there. Jackson Joe. Um, it's a place by USC downtown, Adams and Figueroa. It's a very good breakfast place. But the family that they that owns it, they took care of me, um, gave me work and helped that build them, help do a lot of stuff with my hands, which I like doing, like, I didn't want to be a waiter and do that, that rush. And then respect to people that do it. I'm just, I'm a big dude with 
I like hard labor and stuff. I'm like, I'm going to be in the way in a kitchen just trying to like freaking. <laughs> so I was, I was kind of doing like trying to do as many fit and plus for workouts. Like I like doing physical jobs so I don't have to freaking go to the gym. Um, uh, right. So I was like working physically on my body, working a lot and then just hitting auditions and linked up with a gentleman named uh, Pierre Patrick, who wasn't quite an agent, but he um, would, you know, uh, find me audition like give me auditions for which i guess is what it, an agent does so but it was through an online thing you know um and yeah i was just trying to get the auditions online and do as many things as i can background as many things as i can another um thing that got me started too was vet tv it's a veteran tv uh better all veteran ran tv channel very raunchy uh not for the comp you know not for <laughs> civilians not for civilians really, i would yeah. say um <laughs> as far as the you know it's just very harsh jokes and all that type of stuff but they were but very good like have the set like had good um production value like their sets look good yeah. it looked like and it was all comedy and it was all imp like a lot of it was improv and they none of them had training so when i came to set they let me do my thing and i i gotta give a big shout out to vet tv when i was starting out because they kind of like let me i was like one of the only guys that wasn't a, there's a lot of people but one of the few guys that wasn't a veteran that they let work with them and acting and then they would let me do my thing. So it's cool when you, that was really good for my validation and confidence. It's like a, a space, a floor to just like let this thing out that you have. Cause I think that's people mistake um, preparation for production. They go to these acting classes all the time. They study scenes and they do all this stuff. And they're like, I'm an actor, but like at the end of the day, you got to just get out there and fail miserably and get embarrassed and look stupid and all that stuff to like, move forward like not just go keep going to these classes which is like i don't i never understood that with people they just go to classes all the time and don't, don't. um I've, I've worked i've worked as a playwright uh in the past i work in television now but um as a screenwriter but um i used to go to this thing in new york so i'm new york based um nice. the naked angels theater company every monday night they would have sort of it, like an oh it's like an open call where they invite you to this theater and it's like um they have a bar and it's playwrights and actors getting together to playwrights working on scenes for plays nice. they're doing and actors coming in. And it's great. It's a great mix of people. And it's just, you know, more social than yeah. productive. But um, I always laugh because there was one guy in, in the group who was working on the same play for 13 years. He just kept bringing scenes in. And it was like, at, at one point, it's like, <laughs> I think we've done this entire play like five times. As was like, he, he was he at least it? <laughs> was he at least like doing something new every time or was he just hitting the same uh, he just wanted to hit those same really? notes? <laughs> no not really he was he was he was micromanaging his own play basically uh. and it was just and and i was always when i was um uh writing and, and producing plays in new york i was like get up at its feet quick you know i would i would go uh yeah. submit to all these festivals where it's like you got a four week rehearsal and production time and then like it goes up because that's how you're going to learn, like you said. Of course. If it fails, you get takeaways from it, and you grow. And it, but I always, I you just made me think of that story again. And that. And New York, New York has great, years. rich, great, rich culture of like acting and theater and the arts. You know, LA, ha LA's like weirdly been hijacked by like TikTokers and influencers. You know, it's not, it's it's not like um, it feels or like in most spaces, it feels like people they're here to get famous. You know um yeah. rather than uh rather than like here to like study a form of craft and we're like the tiktok generation i'm not mad at it you know it's just kind of where it's gone sorry somebody's calling me get out of here Don't you know i'm doing an interview sorry guys not a problem you didn't lose me did you okay good nope you're there um, yeah, I, that's something I've really felt uh, with with with, that, with Los Angeles. It feels just like it's there's not like a I'm, you got to like really find your art niche. You got to really find your scene because it it New York is just so much of it. It's just depth and same well, with but Chicago, there is there know. is a lot of a lot of what's going on in LA going on in New York. And I mean now, sure. I mean I always say if you have to clarify your celebrity, you're not a celebrity. So it's like <laughs> YouTube star. No, you're not a star. You know. TikTok influencer. No, you're, you know. And it, it's really not the same thing. Like, a, like right. people don't understand. Like, a movie star is very different than a... And very rare know, these days. Very rare, right. And now they might even be extinct. They might be going <laughs> Pretty much. Extinct. But, I mean, yeah, but it's, it's like, you know, everybody is sort of on this... You know, they don't want to do the homework like you've done. They, everybody's on this 
quest for some sort of celebrity to be noticed and they don't care how they go about it because they do see examples of people breaking out of that but they don't understand those people breaking out of that like you know the queer eye guys you know it's like they've got the background they've done the study and they're coming into like youtube and these social media platforms they they've done their homework they're not just 19 year old lip syncing to you know britney spears right and they, they, <laughs> and they don't understand which, you know speaking of celebrity are you recognized when you walk around in la <laughs> uh i'm more i more look like i should be somebody that's really what the looks like is. they're like <laughs> They look at me like, I feel like he's somebody, but I don't know. You know what I mean? You know how Los Angeles is. If you're not Brad Pitt, nobody cares, right? But it's like, I, uh, I've i gotten recognized a couple times. And I think it's only been as Yuri. So that's kind of nice when that happens. Okay. Kind, of, kind of recognition. Soap operas are very powerful. People underestimate, you know, that there's the ratings, which are not good. But people underestimate that there are still a lot of eyeballs. on Absolutely. Soap. And we're, yeah, we're going to transition now into that. And that people are very passionate about it. I mean, you know, when we, when we started the, uh, Leanne started the snark page uh, almost 11 years ago, you know, it was just this little fun thing she was doing. And I, just, I joined. Uh, I was watching the show later. and I had to make fun of it. That was the thing. Like, <laughs> yeah, it good. had it to come good. out of me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm a little more analytical. I like to point out like, you know, the, the non sequiturs or like, wait, this person was in Europe and five minutes later they're in Port Charles. Oh, well, okay. how does that work? You know, um, I do tend to be a little more analytical, but let's get to GH and yeah. how you came to be there. I think I auditioned for them a couple of times, um, but then I got an audition uh, um, that was for a Russian bodyguard. And it was no lines. They just wanted me to say stuff. For you the just audition, had to look wanted... Russian. <laughs> just, just had to... So for the audition, it was like, just give us like a minute or two of like speaking like a, like a Russian bodyguard. would. I was like, all right. And I weirdly had this thing I wrote. Um, I won't get into detail, but I just had this like thing I wrote that was like 45 seconds. That was just like menacing. And I just did a whole thing. And I guess they liked it. And then um, that's how so I got the gig which was cool, you know, soap operas to me, um, just being honest, you know, before I saw, I just thought they were the corniest thing in the world. Um, I've made fun of them all the time. We do not disagree with you. That's okay. Yeah. I, yeah. I know. I'm like, I'm like, how do I, there's a reason, I, you know, there's a reason they are spoofed. Mm -hmm. Yes. And yeah. I, you know, and I, I've, I've come now and we'll probably talk about like to really appreciate and respect soap operas, like very much so, but it, uh, just before going into it, I was like a soap opera, but also the same thing. Like I'm an actor. So I'm like, I don't give a shit if it's a, if I'm working in the desert with nobody watching, and like, if I got a lizard there watching me, I'm like, um, <laughs> so uh, I was the, um, the yeah, role was no no lines or anything. Um, and also, I told you, I, I did the accent. Um, and uh, oh, my God, I'm so I'm so upset. I can't remember her name right now. Dang it. I was like, I need to remember her name for this. And I can't. But there's a woman that works at the front. That everybody knows. And she's rapping. <laughs> and I had no idea. So I came in and I was like, hello, I am uh, Cyrus. I am here to play uh, Yuri. And she was like, where are you from? I was like, oh, and I could tell she was she did her accent. I was like, oh, shit. I was like, well, I um, <clears throat> kind of lost it. I was like, I'm from Scottsdale, uh, Arizona. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, I was like, I'm not actually rusty, by the way. This is, I'm just doing this because I don't, you know. And he, he laughed. He's like, no, it was fine. So, but the rest of the time, I went back to it. It just was funny. Like first person I meet, she's Russian. I was like, so it actually helps. But then, um, I think I, I think it scared people too. I felt bad. Uh, James uh, Patrick Stewart. Um, we just happened to know each. Like we had, we happened to have mutual friends. Um, that he didn't know, but I did. I, my sister. My sister was uh dating a guy at the time that knew him but uh i saw him we met each other in the uh downstairs before we go up to the to the set and i would just introduce him. i was like hello and he was he was being cool and then i was like i think you'll know my sister and i just kind of i didn't even think about it like being like yuri but he just kind of stared at me like all right like i think i scared him with the russian i don't know i just he did not take it well but then we, he was that guy, he's been singing my praises since day one. I gotta give a lot of love to James Patrick Stewart because he was uh, he was the first guy just to 
you're like, yeah, man, you got a thing. Sorry, I'm getting sidetracked with all these. No, 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 no. We love, um, we no. are, we love <laughs> hearing behind the scenes stories. We love okay. hearing about what these people are like when they're not being these ridiculously over the top characters. <laughs> <laughs> and they're all, most of them are pretty amazing, I have to say. So that's, that's been now, awesome. Did, but, did you, did you audition for other roles or was it just for all these like smaller parts or grab some light um i i auditioned for i did audition for a couple roles um you know and i kind of fall into that i'm you know i'm a big guy i'm a burly guy it's like it's a different type of uh it's a different type of masculinity you know with some of these la masculinity it's a little different not i'm not hating on it it's just you know I'm not like a clean cut, all that type of stuff. Even though I guess I was for you in the beginning, but I'm, I feel like I feel like I'm a little rough around the edges sometimes. So a lot of these roles, you know, I'm reading for. It's like I'm not gonna get this part. So when I see a Russian bodyguard, I was like, all right, oh, got a little, got a little burly you know, that, <laughs> that I can do. Um, so I'll, the parts, but um, it was only a couple. Uh, and the same thing happened actually with NCIS, and I think it happens with a lot of stuff. I auditioned for NCIS nine times over like four years, you know, and then finally got the one. And um, and that's part of this game, man. You just keep you it's just the keep numbers going. Game. Yep. Numbers. Um, and let the casting direct let as many casting directors see you as you can and give your best thing, you know. And it's like it's amazing how even eight years later, I'm now with casting directors that remembered me from uh, an audition eight years ago, one of my first ones that are calling me now for movies. So. Yeah, Good. that's very common. You get called back a lot, and then they finally find something because they, you know, they like you and they want to see. You know, most agents and most right. casting directors, you know, they they they're on your side. They want you to yes. succeed. Otherwise, they wouldn't be calling you in. Um, of course. You know, we were talking last year with actor Samuel Wang, who played Mr. Lee, Selena nice. Wu's bodyguard, and he was saying, you know, um, that once he got cast, you know, the casting director said, "Hey, this is the role for you because it's going to be recurring." All these other roles you auditioned for, you know, the cop, this guy, that guy, it was a one day thing. And mm -hmm. then you'd never, we would never be back. But he lucked out. They waited and cast him in something that they knew they were going to give him multiple episodes. And so, right. and then, so then how did been. Yuri grow from, from that? <laughs> I mean, it oh, was well, like I you were there I'll... like one day and then all of a sudden it's like, oh, wait, they're bringing him back. And it's the ubiquitous yeah. Yuri. Here he is. Yes. yes. <laughs> you, I mean, everybody was surprised every day. Just, people are still surprised when they see me. Like, oh, hey, what's going <laughs> like, on? Me too. I'm like, hey, I don't know. I just worked the call. Um, the first, so the first thing we did, you know, we did it. No lines. Um, it was Miss Miss Brooklyn and Chase, and uh, I just remember doing the scene. And then Frank, I believe his last name is. I can't think of his last name, but Frank Valentini. is the showrunner. Valentini, thank you. Um, came down. And uh, I had no idea who he was, but he, you know, we really like you a lot. We're going to use more of you. And he just kind of just, <laughs> just tur just turned away and walked. And I was like, but what you hear that all the time, like people being nice, you know, they're always like, we're going to cast you. You're going to be the next Iron Man. You're going to all blah, blah, blah. So when I heard it, I was like, all right, whatever. Surely enough, uh, a couple of weeks later, I get another call from them. And there's like, now there's like two lines. I was like, ooh, okay. And I think it's like, thank you. It's not it's nothing even crazy. Right. And then surely enough, you know, I see Frank again. And he's like, we love what you're doing. We're going to keep using you. And I still didn't really believe him. I was like, I was like, whatever, dude, appreciate, you know, be, you appreciate you being nice, but like, I got to keep, you know, keep, keep on the move. A couple of weeks later, a couple more lines. And it kind of kept, it's kind of kept evolving like that. You know, they just, they give me, it's, it seems like they give me a little more to, to do every time. And if I do well, then, you know, kind of keeps, keeps going. So, and Yuri just, uh, it just kept evolving. I mean, I kept finding out. I mean, I think he was Russian at first and then turned into Ukrainian. And uh, then he was Belarusian. I was like, all right, well, glad I worked on it. You know, these are very different cultures, you know, with different. But, uh, you know, the accent was already kind of set in stone anyways. So, uh, but, um, you know, <laughs> it, it was on your grandmother's side, you're Ukrainian. And then on. <laughs> right. That's why I was like. Yeah. Let's, and then you're Russian. On, yeah. Make, make your own backstory um but luckily so, enough they all speak russian so it's like that makes it easier as a base but yeah i, I just wanted to make sure i wasn't too egregious with the accent so. <laughs> now a lot of our i know a lot of our snarkies probably want me to ask this um so i'll ask it so well, what, they're still it. trying to figure out what the relationship is between you and monica 
because they kind of implied almost like like after after that whole Bailey Lou plot was over and Valentine had left, like all of a sudden you're still at the Quartermain Mansion, and then like you're you're hanging out with Monica. Hey man, the gentleman, the gentleman doesn't. Uh, no, I'm just joking. Um, I, I, uh, I don't even know. That's one of those things. It's just kind of, I guess, you know, everything we're talking about. It's like things happened in the moment, and then Frank likes the thing, and he's like, "Let's let's ride with that." And I forgot what he did. He told me to. Um, it was the scene was like, she leaves me with uh, with Valentine, and he was angry with me about something, but uh she like walks away and i think that was like we did you know general hospital by the way you get one maybe two takes i mean they don't mess around <laughs> I was gonna say, was, how does that remind you of football oh baby and, yeah. and the, you know theater like i it's great training grounds because you're moving there's four cameras there's people you know it's that that dodge two directors there's, there's like and go and, and go you're God. Done. yeah and then i was like you know in every scene i'm like was that all right They're like you don't even know you're like fuck it like, i guess i'll see when it comes out i yeah. hope that came yeah out. i hope that was what they wanted if and, you were yeah, speaking they... in english you get to be, it go we're going to the next scene you made it yeah yeah, we, yeah you, have I mean, you have to do something very egregious for them to stop take right you know, time is right. plenty and all that and i mean you know i do i do kind of think you know, what's lacking in today's soap operas because back in the day when all soaps were like a half hour and most of them were New York based. So it was a lot of theater actors who were very quick on their feet, could ad lib. Mm -hmm. If something went wrong on the set, they would cover it because again, they didn't stop, but they treated it more like a play. You come in eight o'clock in the morning, you'd have a whole morning worth of rehearsal yeah. and you'd have a dress rehearsal. You get into your makeup of that you know, film the show in real time. They just move from set to set. Boom, you're done by like 4.30. And now I think because since the shows went to an hour and the model has changed and it's become more like being on a film set where it's just like, let's film all these scenes on this set. Boom, moving yeah. on to the next set. Let's see, you know, it's, yeah, it's just, you got to bring your A game walking in the door. Man, and I'm, you know, I, I'm thankful that like, I haven't had like too many things, but I see those actors coming in there with pay books and pages and thick and you know, I'm like, that's it's a it's a it's a skill, man. It's a really it's a tough, it's not an easy thing. And you know, and all the actors uh, that all the actors I've spoken to on these soaps, it's like, yeah, they they do it kind of for that reason. It's like a half theater thing and I can I can like live my life and be a normal person, but still like get my quench of acting and and this 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 bug that I have. So that's where a lot of I see a lot of actors get drawn to the soaps because it's like I can live a normal life, have a family instead of getting caught up in this Hollywood crazy, you know, madness that it uh, that it can be. So, And as you see, it doesn't have the stigma anymore because you're getting major stars who have done, you know, film and television that coming to soap operas because, yeah, it's a nice steady paycheck. <laughs> yeah, it's easy. And you know who actually made me feel really um validated about the soaps too? Not that I need that, but you know, it just was kind of nice. Um was Margot uh, Margot Robbie. Uh she I got to work with her on a movie and um Babel called Babylon and she worked on a soap in Australia for many, many years. And she was the one that said, like, hey, that's where I learned to be be quick, man. Like one take, all these lines. Like she and she her particularly, I'm not talented like her in this department, but where she had to like learn to cry on command which i watched it firsthand on babylon and i got humbled very fast as an actor um i felt like i was in the gym with lebron james trying to like trying <laughs> to show that i could make a basket and it was, oh that's cute watch this and just a windmill dunk i was like ah that's why she's the number one in the world got it so but she said you know the soaps she she gave a lot of props and that's the first time i really seen an actor like give validation and props to soap i was like whoa that's kind of cool. So that was a that was a cool moment. Yeah, it's a, I'm glad the stigma's pretty much gone away. I mean, yeah, there's still some people, you know, like like you said yourself, you know, what is this thing I'm going on? And then you do it and you realize, oh, this is how actors become actors doing this kind of thing. I mean, Brad Pitt, who you worked with, started out on a soap. Hey, my guy. And yeah, he didn't do very well because they got rid of him quickly. <laughs> but, you know, I'm sure, you know, that was some early training for him. And then yeah. we know where his career went. Absolutely. And it's just, even if you just think about it objectively, it's like, it's just such a training grounds. It's like, okay, four cameras, 
fast, you know, one director, uh, the actor, you know, it's just like, it's just like good training to do anyways, not, you know, I'm not reducing it to that, but it's like, uh, you know, I'm kind of interested in doing, um, you know, maybe some more different series and films. So, uh, but I can tell you what, that's so being getting to work with general hospitals has just been such a, such a cool blessing and honor in that regards. And soap fans and are a very interesting bunch of people. Yes. You know, are you, I mean, I don't know how tapped in you are to the fan situation, but because <laughs> of our page, which, as you right. know, is a satire and parody page. We're not about, mm -hmm. oh, we love everyone and we and yes. it's not like that. And That's so, good. yeah. Which we get black for mm -hmm. sometimes. We get a lot of black. No, it's, you know? no I'm, but I'm very hard. happy. It, but it's, it's what made me interested. It's what made me interested, not to cut you off, but it's oh, like yeah. you need to be made fun of. You need to, if you love something, you know, it's, it's a loving thing. It's like, and if it of wasn't you. worth being fun of, we wouldn't do it. You know, that's Absolutely. the point. So, but I, 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 I'm particularly uh, aware of the fact that whenever I post about you, and it's always positive because we always love you, but seriously, <laughs> there are 35 people who have to jump into the comments and talk about your beard. Oh yeah. They're like, I love your beard. I hate this. I wish he'd shave. I hope he never shaves. I'm like, why do you people have so many opinions about this poor man's face? You know, the beard is it's been a bit, it's been an issue. I, it might be why I haven't gotten called back. They like the beard because I just don't, you know, I like I don't know, I like the beard I, personally, but and I'm not like attached to it. I just and I will say I, this, you can't see the chatness or you're not looking, but there several of the, my snark people are like, Oh my god, his hair, his hair is like a miracle. <laughs> you have I, awesome I, hair. I'm I'm glad it worked out because I was a little I was like, Oh my I looked at the thing right before I logged in, I was like, Holy crap, my hair is <laughs> all over the place. I've been I, I've I don't have the hair, but I'm trying to do the beard thing. Like I've, I've I been very, last month, so I, I see you, I see you. Okay. I it's it's actually kind of been a problem because I, I come in with full everything and like Frank's like, what the hell? Frank wants me shaved. <laughs> um and I just have never I just I just like stopped shaving the last because you know there's hair and makeup. So I'm like, if you guys want me to look a certain way, you know, make me look a certain way. But I was shooting a short film, a different film where I committed to that I wanted to keep the beard and stuff. And so like it started from that. I was like, Yeah, sorry, I can't shave. And I remember actually that episode. I think I forgot where it was. I think I was meeting Terry at the hospital or something for the for the first time, and uh, I had the beard. And like there, everybody, the whole this crew was nervous. Like beard, did you get it approved? All these all these things. Everybody's freaking out. And then we do that. We do our practice, and then the uh, Frank's like, looks amazing, looks great. And I was like, yeah. I was like, I told you. I was like, I knew it did. I was like, I'm not just keeping <laughs> this thing. You know, I know the beard looks good, yeah. but you know you were. Like, <laughs> they like they like clean shit you know the, the the needy clean shaven guys of the i get it you know and i'm not against it i just i don't know i kind of like evolved into this thing and I'll, i'm down to shave it but uh it just kind of it kind of went and, um, everybody's yeah. gonna keep the beard yeah I have an it's actor been a fun drama who, i have an actor friend who like he got cast a lot but not for things he wanted and then he was just like <laughs> you know screw it i'm growing a beard and ever since yeah. he grew the beard he gets cast in everything not Same funny. thing with um Nathaniel Gray who played Mason. He was he was bald for some other shoot. So coming in, they're like, you know, he's like, I gotta keep, I I can't, you know, grow hair right now. So they kept the luck for him for his and, entire. And time. to what you're saying, I've realized I've had to realize that my hair is a strength. Like when I I worked on a show called Welcome to Chippendales, I had the flow like down to here, and it was 1979. My oh, hair perfect. looked just in the time. It was like, it was cooking. You know, it worked. And then like all the hairdressers were like, oh my God, your hair was phenomenal. Like I always get compliments on my hair and my beard. And I'm like, why am I taking these away, man? Like, let's, let's, let's let the world see the hair and the beard. But, Which I think who was the American gladiator who had that kind of fluff, you know, the one. American oh, gladiator had, I can't yeah. remember his name. I yeah. can't remember. You know who I mean I, though. I know yeah. exactly what you're talking about. So you mentioned um, Terry, so we're going to segue into that because I'm going to share something with you on screen right now. Um, okay. We do we do uh, snark awards at the end of every year, and you we 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 gave you this oh award: best couple in secret invisible episodes, Terry and Yuri. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Let me explain the concept of no. I think I, I think I get it. Okay, but, like, yeah, okay. that's a, but yeah, that's hilarious. That happens often on this show. It's like they started this beautiful romance with you two, and I mean, by the way, you guys look fantastic together. I have a picture I love. Yeah, that picture. 
I mean, because, you know, she's very tall and statuesque. I mean, yeah, you look like a couple. Yeah, and it's a good photo. In the post, we say, you know, it's like you guys could be leading this show if they would just let you. Because yeah. Terry is the co-chief of staff of General Hospital. Yuri is her boyfriend. And it's like, you know, it's very frustrating for us as fans to see Yuri, you know, helping out Lois's mom at Thanksgiving and Terry only shows up to give diagnoses. And it's like, but, but. We but... want to see you together. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 Well, I start it if you're not going to show it. And that's yeah, funny. Very I, frustrating. Always, I always see, that's like one thing I've seen. I think I don't like really read too many comments or messages, but whenever I see ones, it's like, people are always like, when the hell did all this stuff happen? They're like, what are these guys? It's funny that it's just funny that you said that award because so many people were like, these guys do more stuff off camera than, than not. Um, well, and we are and, also and it, very, I was going to say, we're very mindful on the page mm -hmm. that not everyone is pleased by this. And so every yes. time you and Terry are mentioned or anytime Terry's mentioned, because Cassandra needs to be honored and I yeah. want her to feel that this is a safe yeah. place for her. I I have probably banned 50 people over comments made about her. And yeah. I will continue to do so because my page is a safe space. So. Yes, that's good. And I've I've enjoyed that aspect of it actually, because I get obviously, you know, people poke all these things and say things and comments. And I'm not against jokes, you know, I don't mind those things, but when people get nasty um i don't respond to people online and stuff but if people say something to me in person or whatnot i'm it's been a fun growing thing just like and she's great you know as far as like talking about being a trans uh trans actress and people not adjusting or whatnot um she's been really cool and she's uh, a really good actress so she's made it easy for me i mean i'm a pretty ignorant guy when it comes to these things some of these new things you know uh newer as far as like the trans community and whatnot so she's been cool being graceful with me and my stupidity like i would just come but you know and that's all that's all it is, is people just want respect like you respect me i'll respect you but don't like come at me you know i, I don't know how to, i don't want to sound like yeah, well, no, it, doesn't, no. I mean, it I, doesn't have to be as much of a thing as people make it out to be. Yeah, true. yes. Yeah. It's not like that. It's like if you're, you know, and, and by the way, I believe like she's, she's a you know, she's more woman than some women I know. You know, what I mean? <laughs> like, exactly. like she's, she's doing the thing. You know what I mean? She's not half assed in this. Uh, I'm sorry if I sound, I'm not like trying to make fun of this, but because you know, I know we got to be tiptoeing here with <laughs> people, yeah. but I'm, you're, you're I'm, trying to, I'm trying to say all, I'm trying to say all this because she's very, She's a very good actress and she's been really cool with all this. And she even had empathy for me. Like the fact that she pointed out, she's like, you know, I, I know it can be tough being a, a straight male with like a trans person. You know, the fact that she's even like thinking about that for me, I was like, that's, that's, that makes me respect her totally. It's just, again, I'll respect you as a person if you respect me. And if we don't, then whatever, it's not a big deal. But, um, and again, I don't respond to stuff online personally, just because I think that shit's pointless, but in person, I, I I like sparking those debates now. I'm like, let's talk about it. Let's, you know, let's talk about it. Because I'm I'm involved <laughs> and I come from, you know, Arizona, which isn't a very, you know, let's just say they're not uh, up to date on the on the trans um, stuff in Arizona. For, uh, yeah, yeah. I but, mean, um, there, there's also a difference, Cyrus, between, you know, and I don't want to, I don't want to say this in, the, in a bad connotation, ignorance of the subject and wanting wanting and willing to learn and be taught something yes. new, and then just write no this is you know you are an alien to me you are you know it's like we're all human beings i work in my spare time with a lot of trans youth and it's like you know part of the reason i'm sure cassandra is so um empathetic and and can can explain this is like because she's had to she's probably had yeah. to be tough her entire life because absolutely that is you know and and i wish more people especially on the page would understand it's like it's not a choice you know yes. this is this is how you feel how you feel inside it has nothing to do with like sex or who you're attracted to and it's just like you know and i and i i just feel like and again i'm more the critic of general hospital than the satire person but i just feel that like gh is the, the soaps in general they used to teach us things and i think they're just missing out on an opportunity on how to portray the life of a transgender person. 
And it doesn't mm-hmm. even have to be big, you know, scary storylines. It could just be what's an everyday like. For yeah, people? right. Why what do they have to, to deal with? Yeah, and even and we be, say in this, you know... I'll, I'll send you the thing later. And we say in this post when we gave you the award, um, you know, thank I'd you also by the way. I'm very honored see... by the way yeah, for okay, the award. Hey, so it is the highest honor. Thank you. Thank um, you. <laughs> but we also say in this post, it's like I'd also like to see how Yuri copes with. You know, because there was a scene talked about, not shown, yeah. where Terry had to tell Yuri that she was transgender. And are you okay with that? And I would like to see, like, you know, what is the 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 crap that Yuri has to put up with on a daily basis? You know, oh, yeah. your girlfriend's not a real girl. Oh, this, that, yeah. you know, as a, you know, as you said, straight. And, like, you're not telling Yuri about his girl. You know what I'm saying? Nobody, yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. He's the kind of but guy, like, to see that. like, good luck saying to Yuri, like, who the hell is that? He'll, you know, he's a right. he's a Russian exactly. bodyguard. You'll get your next your next nap. So that's a and funny. And like you said, she's more women than anybody Trust else. me. Yeah, exactly. Well, there's yeah, some women yeah. I know. So, like, yeah. it's. But, uh, but I'm also yeah. a big believer of, you know, if people tell you who they are, believe them. Yeah. You know, it's like Absolutely. no, you're not. Why, that. No, you shouldn't that's be. That's why I like yeah. her. I respect her as a person. It's not. It has nothing to do with any of that shit. She's just a cool person, and we yeah. talk and we talk depths and all those things. That's a, that's the shit I put first before any of that other stuff. I really don't care personally. And the but other thing other is, stuff, is, you two I mean, have incredible chemistry on camera. I mean, call yeah. that whatever it is. And this one of there's a comment in the in the chat that says, "Why would they have this couple?" with so much sparkle and so much chemistry between them and keep them. So it's like, I mean, Frank is very willing to go there, but he's not willing to go there all the way. And that's okay. Yeah. I understand it's daytime TV. You got to mind your P's and Q's. We we have to all hail the mouse and behave ourselves, yeah. you know? So, yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm with, I think there, there could be, I don't know. It's just, I'm all speculation. So I don't I have no, right, idea I know where it's all for us too. Right? Well, yeah. Right. Like they could be easing into it. Um, you know, or like just wanting to be not so, um, in their face. Yeah. In their face, I guess. But I'm with you is like, it's like, don't make it zero or hundred. Like why can't it just be normal activities that situations that yeah, just people being, the people or a couple being a couple you know it's not like it has to be like this is a crazy situation they were in because she's trans and it's like why don't we just do a situation that happens and right. see how you, these people respond you, like, <laughs> you know what i mean you know like, like when you guys show up together at a event at the savoy or at a right. whatever i mean make it as normal as possible but i know the viewers want to see you they like that aspect of your character they like having you with cassandra you guys you work together very well and it shows yeah. again she's a great actress so she pulls a lot out of me i mean every you know every actor knows like good actors will pull even more out of you so it's, she's been very easy very seamless and very very cool throughout the whole process um yeah just been well, a i'll work, I'll work hard on getting her on here and we'll get her on here as well. we'll get her on here i'm actually not i think we'll get her on here i just don't know she has like you know i'm not at that cool level yet with pr teams <laughs> and stuff you know or like you got people doing things so well and and i understand you know you have to vet things i mean everybody does but you have to right vet things. It's a, it's, that's my point is like there that people have a pro i didn't even i don't i'm still learning this stuff it's like you can't just talk to anybody you have to like do things i'm like i don't talk to who i want to talk to but um, <laughs> i'm trying but to get I, I appreciate, good. which is why you're here we're trying to get on the PR's good list, but we'll see how that works. You're That's called the thing. General I, I Hospital. Guess, what? Yeah. <laughs> I was I was going to ask you guys. Do you guys have issues? Like, do they not like like? You guys have issues with those guys? Like, we have. Like, um, well, no, or? not at, not at all. Because we're. Um, It'd be stupid if they did. I just was curious. We, yeah. Know. No, we have we have um, several actors from the show that follow us. We have several crew members from the show. I personally know two of the writing crew who didn't get fired. Um, yeah, and you know it's like they all kind of secretly follow us, but they have to be careful too because again, they have to be it's careful. their job, and we're not like officially sanctioned or anything, right. even though we have big numbers. But yeah, I'm in I'm in touch with the um, the PR department at the show now because you know to to just get a relationship going, and of course have more people want to come on and know that we are not like these other crazy Facebook pages that are just you know yeah, randomly. All- you know, Yuri goes on a shooting spree and 
kills Carly, you know. Have you okay? Spoiler. That is a whole other genre <laughs> that you would find utterly hilarious are the spoiler pages that make oh, up boy. Movies. and what but the best part, and we love it, we make fun of it in our little patrons group, which most people can't see, but they will take the worst Photoshop job known to man and paste these pictures of various gh people in it with this ridiculous plot line oh it's gosh. like a whole industry unto itself that's that's when you're doing something right though when you got mimics and all these things and people you know like you know you're big you're big you're big time and uh particularly with what you guys are talking about about making fun of and all these things like anything great needs to be it you I think you need to be able to make fun of yourself. And if you're a company, if you're an organization, it's like you want that because that's more people thinking yeah. about it, talking about it, even if it's not positive or whatever. I don't know, which I don't even know what that means, but it's like they want, I don't know, you know, it's like they get weird about people doing stuff. And it's like, let people make fun of the show, man. That's why, you know, it's, I don't know. it's good. Yeah. So quick, we've got just a few more minutes. We're going to do some quick questions. Who yeah, in, so, uh, in the cast of General Hospital would you love to have a scene with that you have not yet worked with? Ooh, my guy Dex. Oh, we did have a scene. Shoot, we danced. Damn it, we danced. <laughs> uh, Evan Hopper. Um, just because I love him, and we we we. I mean, I love all these guys, but we. He's just so he's like a little puppy dog, and we we were we were having a good we had a good time. Like he just, makes fun of himself on. He's Instagram. great. He He's is great. hilarious. Yeah. Like, All those guys are. Um, but we actually, I don't know. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stick with him because we actually haven't had a scene. We had just the dancing. It doesn't, that, that doesn't even count. And he's a bodyguard too. So I think it'd be funny to see two bodyguards next to each other. Like We should get all the bodyguards on one night and have like a bodyguard off of some Bodyguard <laughs> off. <That'd> be, <laughs> who can guard the best? <laughs> <laughs> Everybody, everybody's clapping up here going yes we like that idea <laughs> don't listen sunny has a different bodyguard every day i think it's right. <laughs> can't, rotating can't a group of people yeah don't get that's on that hilarious. <laughs> that's hilarious. Yeah, yeah i know i don't want to be taken out no i like uh, what some they... other questions leanne do we have i'm trying to think that was the one that everybody was asking me about they were like um do you have a backstory for yuri are there things that you know about yuri that that you use in your motivation Oh yeah. Yeah. There's a lot. Um, it's kind of hard because they keep, again, they keep changing things all the time. Like the Ukrainian, the Russian, the Belarusian. I was a baby right. who was adopted in all these countries. I don't know. <laughs> I'm like, dude. <laughs> so I, I got away from like the overly creating a, like this thing and kind of tried to use more of myself. Um, and then just have things that I do to like bring up Yuri, you know, I do use a lot of music, a lot of Russian music, uh, and Ukrainian music. There's a, a great soundtrack to a movie called Everything is Illuminated. And it's this Russian, it's all Russian music. Yeah. And it just cool. kind of okay. bring, brings me into the into the mode. And then, you know, I just kind of would like, I, I mean, I literally only watched like Russian stuff for a long, and like Eastern European, just people talking, not even just to be in the culture. Like, I don't know. I have my, I have my own uh, handwritten Yuri story, but it's like, it's hard because the thing is such a, mutating thing all the time it's like all right well i'm gonna write he was a russian he was like the best blah 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 and they're like oh he's ukrainian i'm like oh crap and i'm like you know <laughs> it's like instead of erasing and trying i'm like let me just you know so yes i do have well hope hopefully that was um the writing regime that is leaving because they did that a lot to other characters as well so you weren't the only victim of constant changing stories and character background and all that so and i'm not hating on the writing either the writing has been great i mean they write you know the other reason yeah. i'm in the show but but, just, but uh, you are get, i will say this you are getting a very very seasoned uh head writer in patrick mulcahy awesome. he, he's brilliant so we are i mean because that's probably our biggest uh complaint these days is just the inconsistent writing and Damn. hopefully he'll kind of unify it and get you on more which hey, I'm, I'm just, I'm just happy to be here. They want me on more, but writing as is as long, the, they, as long as they read the, uh, I mean, in that case, they should be reading the social media because then they would know who is popular and, and who they should really be focusing on. So we're, yeah. we're all, we're all in your corner for that. I might be screwed that I don't have all those big followers like, like everybody. So that might, <laughs> that might not help. Oh, me, hey, but... you know what you be, I think you would be very surprised at yeah. how much people at the... love you and are <laughs> yeah. excited. When we announced that you were going to come and talk to us, I mean, there was much 
fanning of self and clutching of pearls and excitement. Oh, okay. man. <laughs> oh, yeah. After, the after they real. figured it was Yuri and not Cyrus. Not the other Cyrus, right, <laughs> right. No, the fans have been, it's crazy, the support. And my aunt, I mean, my aunt lives in Long Island, New York, you know, and she, she oh, we're uh, about, she's, we're, she's a hairdresser. Uh, Northport, Long Island? Yes, I know it, yeah. Yeah, yeah she, she. I forgot the. I, I need to know the name of her. Um, that's oh, such a bad nephew. I don't know. I forgot the name of her salon, but um, but she. Don't you worry, know, people she, will she, Google. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know the salon, man. She's she's just somebody. I think one somebody said her was talking about her cousin, and Yuri was her favorite character. She was like, "That's my nephew," and we had a cool moment. I like wrote her. I wrote her a letter as Yuri, uh, just to you know. Just because the fans are, it's, it's cool. Right? I, I had no idea people even like appreciated that or cared at all. So it was like for somebody to be so adamant about Yuri when there's a whole lot of other, this show has been around since 63. And you know, I'm like, she cares about it. Well, <laughs> and that's the thing know. with soaps. Once you have that um, soap fan base, they will, they will follow your career. <laughs> Seriously. We constantly have people going, Hey, I saw, you know, this person on Matlock and I saw, you know, pointing out all the guest appearances that a lot of the actors have done other shows. I mean, they're a very, like I said earlier, they're a very strong, loyal fan base. And I mean, Mm -hmm. you know, and, and everything I have read about, you know, you as an actor, you as a person too, because I know you're, you're very giving in your spare time with charities and things like that. You know, I mean, everybody's just like, you know, thumbs up. So, I appreciate you saying that. that. Appreciate you saying that. that. Yeah, I don't. I don't do much charity work. It's more just giving my tools to uh, to people that I don't know. That's I just want to share. Share. I want to share the wealth. You know, it's like, yeah. hey, man, yeah. I got I got privilege enough to be able to have access to you know high level information. And uh, man, I wish I knew about acting when when I was young. Like if I could have got started when I was younger, I probably wouldn't even put a football helmet on. You know, and who knows. Um, could have been i'm very thankful for football but yeah it's people um it's cool to see like younger people getting into it um and uh anyways sorry rambling rambling again oh well, I, I did see a question leanne about what hair product do you use yeah what hair product do you use? <laughs> that was a question yeah all natural sweat baby oh there you go <laughs> yeah. see, when you got hair that great why I, why put product in it it's just i really don't put my, like all you know i'll i'll wash it with so like heart you know good soap and whatnot every few days i don't i really don't do much to it i just got that's got the chest the chest hair too yeah the, the, the hair is we're not uh yeah i won't get to that just that a was bit, a guys, bonus so. that we were not just, just anticipating a little, <laughs> just a little just a little something <laughs> The magic Milo here. Watch, watch the Chilton Chippendales show if you want to uh, see a little more. But um, but uh, no, I don't. I don't use any product. Well, we have so enjoyed visiting with you tonight, Cyrus. You are delightful. We would love to guys. invite you back at some point, and you can bring any friend with you that you want. <laughs> Any friend. <laughs> well, you any know, friend. Any Are you friend. saying any <laughs> friend? But we mean one friend. If I can get Evan, yeah, that'd be great. If I can get Evan, yeah. If you could get Evan, get Evan oh. dude, <laughs> that would be epic. No, there. Last thing I'll say to the the cast, I love. Everybody's really, really awesome. I don't know. You guys probably already know this, but they're so fun. But um, thank you so much for having me. I appreciate you guys even taking the time and everybody in the screens. Just let's um i'm gonna laugh. unpin you for a second so that people can um see if i can figure out how to do that remove pin so people can you can see everybody hold on remove pin you can also put it in gallery mode and there's everybody if you want to wave to cyrus and turn your thing on you can see the people oh my gosh hey what's up everybody oh man so hello 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 is- just so and there's thrilled. a lot of people who couldn't join us tonight and and then this will eventually go Be public recorded. on the page so yeah, yeah. Wow. um oh, but, look at yeah. those beautiful faces look at those beautiful beautiful faces wow let's go and i want to tell you do. these are some of the funniest people on the internet <laughs> their yeah. comments about they're just funnier than anything i could come up with so <laughs> well i appreciate y'all tuning in and even even caring to, to have me around so i appreciate the heck out of this is, this is and, awesome so, and yeah. everyone in the chat is just saying thank you thank you thank you thank you for coming 
um, again, thank you. You're adorable. We know you're adorable. And and <laughs> and they want you all to tell Evan that we love him too. So I'll tell Evan. I'll talk to you. I'll do, I'll, I got I got homework to do. So I'll be. Thank you for some spending Thank you so much. Of course. Awesome. Oh. You guys are awesome. Really right. awesome. Take care, Cyrus. Good night, everybody. Bye, everybody. Thank you for being with us.